Welcome to the very first CY Learning Mutual Funds six week boot camp. Now, I want to thank all of you for taking the time to join us today. We do have an exciting presentation for you, but before I begin, we quickly need to cover off just a few housekeeping items. First, today's lecture is going to be more of me talking. Future lectures will definitely be more interactive. Secondly, please hold off any kind of questions that you have until the end. I know you're likely going to have some, and we're going to leave some time at the end to address them. Third, I am working from my home office today. I'm sure a lot of you are probably doing the same thing at this point, but if you do hear anything unusual in the background, please just ignore it. Most of my kids are teenagers now, kind of glued to their smartphones, so I don't expect there to be any issues, but I might need to maybe put on my dad hat and just quickly deal with something if I have to. Finally, I'm going to show you quickly my CY Learning hat. This is my favorite CY Learning hat right here. On future webinars, you might actually see me wearing this hat, but I want to be clear as to why. It's either because I need a haircut and I couldn't get one because, as you all know, it's really hard to these days. But more to the point, secondly, it's probably more likely that I need a haircut badly and I got one, but as a result of that haircut, because it wasn't for my favorite barber, I should be wearing the CY Learning hat. So if you guys do me see, you know, see me wearing that on future videos, at least now you know why. All right, let's get started right now and have a look at today's agenda. What do we have on the plate here? There we go. Okay, so over your screen you should see today's agenda. On the next few pages, we are going to discuss introductions. We're going to talk about the structure of weekly webinars. We're going to talk about the recommended CY learning study process, uh, how it works and why it's really good for you. We're going to talk about three key learning points, you know, about your course that you really should know. And then we're going to talk about what I like to call the fundamentals or building blocks of all mutual funds, which really are stocks and bonds, cash and cash equivalents, and of course, derivatives as well. All right. Let's have a look at uh, the introductions here. What do we have? Okay, introductions. So, very first one. Why are we running this boot camp? That's a great question. Now, we know that a lot of you are being asked to stay home these days because of the ongoing COVID-19 coronavirus situation that's happening right now. It's an unfortunate situation, but it is reality. Now, I know that staying home can make some people pretty happy but it does make it really difficult to get help. I mean, you can't just walk over to a colleague's desk or, or a manager's office anymore and ask them a quick question or two and get an answer. And, and calling somebody up these days for help on the phone can be even harder. So a lot of you might have some time on your hands right now and you're probably wondering, okay, what do I do now? How do I best make use of the time that I have in front of me? Well, you know, one of my colleagues, Corey Snyder, recently said, the choices that you make today helps determine your success tomorrow. And that's a really great message, and it holds especially true during these challenging times that we're all facing. So in a nutshell, many of our students have been really good to us over the years. We want to give back, you know, by helping everybody today. And this is why we're offering this complimentary program during this time. So who is this boot camp for? Well, this complimentary boot camp is ideal for anyone that wants to get a mutual fund license or maybe upgrade their current skills and knowledge or perhaps apply for a new job or a new role in the future or perhaps simply anyone that just needs a bit of encouragement to get started today and you're looking for some help along the way. I mean, most of the courses in the financial services industry, they're tough. Right? And exams are often 100% finals. So how you do on the exam is how you do in the course. And there really is, you know, no part marks for showing your work. Right? So we can appreciate that some of you watching today may not even be CY Learning students, and that's fine. This boot camp gives you the opportunity to study along with CY, and we've actually done a lot of the heavy lifting for you already. So we do have free content available on our YouTube channel where we have an investment basic series. 
I do recommend that everyone watch that Investment Basics series before even cracking open your course textbook or the CY Learning Study Guide. It's going to help you to give you a bit of background in the material before you even get started. Also, while you're there on our CY you know, YouTube site, um, please make a point to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're always releasing new videos and new content. It's a really good resource for you. In fact, I'm even wearing my subscribe shirt today as a friendly reminder for everybody. All right. So what is the Mutual Fund Six Week Boot Camp? So the Mutual Fund Six Week Boot Camp, it's going to be a special program. It's going to combine various aspects of the Investment Funds in Canada course from Canadian Securities Institute along with the Canadian Investment Funds course from IFSI Institute. These are the two big educational regulators in the mutual fund industry. Now, along with this program, you're going to receive a study schedule for your specific course. And it's going to help to keep you on track with your studies. And that study schedule has been specially built with the length of the course in mind. We're going to talk about it for, you know, a little bit later on in this presentation. But I want to be clear. All of you are in a really unique situation. You've got access to a complimentary program with a few hundred dollars. You have six live webinars across a six week program and anybody can participate in these webinars. Um, but you also have the ability to book, you know, access to an expert trainer where you can have 15 you know, minute sessions to ask questions and get clear answers. So that's pretty awesome. But I do want to stress one thing. The, um, although the webinar itself is complimentary and everybody can participate, the call-in sessions are only for CY students that have an active subscription. Okay, so only for CY students with an active subscription. So if you definitely have that, then you can certainly book one of those call-in sessions on a Friday. Fourth thing I want to cover this is who is CY Learning? So, CY Learn, we're kind of an industry secret. We are a Canadian training company. Our mission is to help financial industry students pass challenging Canadian regulatory licensing exams. That's what we do, and we're really good at it. Now, here at CY Learning, we have well over 5,000 active students across our many programs at any one time. Our corporate clients include three of the big five banks. Uh, they're direct investing firms, along with a number of the largest investment firms and insurance companies across the country. In fact, at one of those big banks, we even have a Canada-wide agreement at the retail level to support that bank's growth initiatives. Pretty impressive. Now, on a side note, there's a real industry movement toward mandatory credentialing for financial planners. So we've recently entered into a partnership with another top five bank to help a few hundred of their employees over the next year get professionally licensed for financial planning. That's a program that's brand new. It's being rolled out to our corporate partner first and foremost. It's not even available for retail yet. All right, but I, I just want to give you guys kind of a heads up. If any of you are thinking about getting professionally licensed for financial planning, then definitely, you know, keep CY Learning in mind, pay attention because we've got that program coming. I would probably say it might be available in the fall, give or take. Who knows? All right. But pay attention. All right. So here at CY Learning, we've got skilled regulatory trainers on staff, people that in, you know, hold special designations such as the Certified Financial Pleasure de you know, Planner designation, the Chartered Investment Manager designation, uh, you know, uh, FCSIs, fellow of the Canadian Securities Institutes, just to name a few. Okay, we've got a business that's built across three broad but very related areas, uh, banking, financial services, insurance, and of course, interior real estate. And we've built many successful study tools for these courses. To date, we actually support over 25 courses with more coming in the near future. All right. Very last about your trainer. So I'm going to be your host and trainer today. My name is Jason Nell. I am a regulatory trainer for a number of courses, including the Canadian Securities course, the CPH, and some other higher level courses, such as the WME, etc. I am a certified financial planner. I'm a chartered investment manager. I am an accredited financial management advisor. I'm also a fellow of the Canadian Securities Institute. 
I was a securities and life insurance licensed for many years at a leading investment firm and at one of our big banks. But more to the point, I've been a trainer with CY Learning for a number of years and I've got a lot of industry knowledge and experience that I like to bring to bear to help students just like you. All right, so up on the screen, you should see one of our key messages that we want to share with you today. This is uh, Corey Snyder. He's one of our directors here at CY Learning. And as he says, the choices that you make today helps determine your success tomorrow. So definitely take the opportunity and time that you have today to focus on your family, but also to focus on your future as well. All right, structure of the webinars. Structure of the webinars. So the weekly webinars that we've built, they're designed to really help you and to complement our mutual fund study tools. So on average, each weekly webinar will likely last between 30 to 45 minutes, give or take, right? It all depends, you know, how busy they're gonna be. But just like in college university, we can't possibly teach you everything that you need to know in a 30 or 45 minute segment once each week, right? That's just not, you know, realistic. So, you know, a small part of the webinar is gonna be about teaching you, but a larger part of the weekly webinars is gonna be focused on working our way through different types of questions and answers and getting tricked and solving these questions and understanding the reasons why we got them right, but also the reasons why we got them wrong, okay? Now, this boot camp is gonna rely on you following along with your study schedule in keeping up with each day's activities. Now, some days will definitely be busier than others. We've taken this into consideration. But students with active CY Learning subscriptions, as I said before, can book 15 minute active sessions with a CY Learning study coach. And you can see the following link on your screen, cylearning.com forward slash bootcamp. If you go to that particular link, you'll be able to book that study session, but you'll also be able to get things such as, um, such as the study schedules, anything else that you need, okay? All right, let's move on to the study process. So CY Learning study process. Up on your screen you should see the CY Learning study process pyramid. Now, before we dive into the pyramid, I wanna start off by asking all of you a question. And I want you to really, you know, kind of put your thinking hats on about this one. If you were given a textbook and then simply told to come back when you feel that you're ready to write an exam that's worth 100% of your mark, what would you do? How would you prepare for that? What steps would you take? You know, I, I know a lot of you probably have got no idea how to even begin, you know, getting started with something like that. And, and I want to share with you this. You're not alone. For many people, they don't really know what to do or how to tackle such a problem either. So for this reason, you've all been given a study schedule. It's going to be your biggest asset in ensuring that you complete your studies on time. So if you stay on track with the study schedule, you'll find it's going to put you into a really good position to be successful in this course. Now, myself, I've taken a lot of exams over the years. So many, in fact, you could probably call me a, a seasoned student or a, or a professional student. If there's anything that I've learned over the years, it's this. It's a very rare student that can just read a book and then walk into an exam and pass. I mean, even I can't do that. In school, you're used to being taught. You're used to having regular assignments. You're used to getting progress reports along the way. But perhaps most importantly, your final mark is usually a combination of the work that you did leading up to your exam along with your exam score itself. And more often than not, if you write a poor exam, you're usually okay. But in the financial services industry, that's not the case. These courses, these professional licensing courses, all of these are 100% final exams. How you do in the course, how you do on the exam, is how you do in the course, right? So you need to study well. You need to work your way through exam level questions, and maybe most importantly, you gotta get tricked in a number of these questions in order to truly learn from them. Let me give you an example. What color shoes am I wearing right now? What, what 
what color shoes am I wearing right now? I mean, how do you even begin to answer that? You, you can't see my feet, but the question's asking you about the color of my shoes. So how do you solve this? I mean, perhaps one strategy is to make some really reasonable assumptions. I mean, if I'm a man, and I am, okay, but if I'm a man wearing a business suit, then I likely have on dress shoes, right? And most dress shoes for men are usually a, you know, maybe a dark shoe color, maybe black, maybe brown, right? Who knows? But I'm working from home today, right? And I'm certainly not wearing a business suit, as you can see. So maybe I don't have on dress shoes. Maybe, maybe I don't even have any shoes on at all right now. Who knows? right? The point is, you're probably going to get that kind of a question wrong, but you're going to learn from it. You're going to learn how to approach it and how to solve it. And, and this is why working your way through challenging exam level practice questions can be so important and helpful for you. It's so that you don't make the same mistakes when it comes down to your actual exam. Those questions will be very different, but if you understand the concepts and you've been prepared really well in the concepts, you're not going to have any difficulties with your actual exam when the time comes. Now, before I talk about the study tools, I want to briefly talk a little bit further about that study schedule. So, I want to bring to your attention, you know, a scheduling feature that we use very successfully for many years with certain courses, such as the Canadian Securities course, and it's the same feature that we're using with these mutual fund courses as well. If you've got your study schedule in front of you, have a look at it. I want you to really look closely. Look at the very first couple of days in the very first week. What do you see? Well, you'll probably see that we're actually not starting with chapter one. We're not starting there. In fact, what we're doing is we're starting our studies with the investments themselves. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin by learning about the fundamental building blocks first. That is stocks, bonds, cash and cash equivalents, and a little bit about derivatives too. And these are actually building blocks behind all mutual funds around the world, and this makes for a really great starting point in the course. And we won't actually be coming back into some of these earlier chapters until later on in the course, because they can be a little bit more memory oriented, but they also can be a little bit dry and probably not a great starting point to begin with. So let's start and talk about now the study schedule, all right? So, down here is your foundation of your pyramid, right? The foundation is the base. And as you can see, the base of the pyramid is the course textbook and or the CY study guide. So, the course textbook and the CY study guide. Let me talk about these for a minute. In my mind, there really is two ways to learn the course material. You can either pick up your course book and read it cover to cover, trying to absorb absolutely everything. Now, the problem with this approach is that you don't know what you need to know. Hence, the second way to study is to use a course textbook and to use the CY Learning Study Guide to help you build the fundamental knowledge that you need to know. And of course, if you need to know any further, you can certainly treat that course textbook like a reference manual and dive deep into it as much as you want. All right, but the CY Learning Study Guide is gonna to help to condense and simplify the course using everyday plain language, memory aids, analogies, exam tips, a whole bunch of things in there. The study guide is actually written by our team of in-house trainers, and I kinda of like to think of it as, as being able to look through the eyes of the trainer on the course material itself. If you actually had to read the textbook by itself, it probably struggle like many others, you know, trying to figure out what you absolutely need to know, what you can safely set aside and different things like that. So definitely, you know, make use of the CY Learning Study Guide. It's fully designed to complement your course textbook. Secondly, the CY e-learning videos. These are fantastic. The mutual fund you know, e-learning videos, they're broken up by subject area. For example, we've got videos focused on fixed income, videos on equities, and if you don't know what I just said, fixed income is bonds and equities is stocks. But the point is, is that the videos are all designed to teach you some of the key concepts in each area. 
So if you've got time, you may want to start off each section by watching the e-learning videos. Otherwise, just dive straight into the study guide. But I want to be clear about one thing. Much like a TV show or a movie doesn't have all the detail that the book or the novel that it's based on has, you know, the videos are not designed to replace the study guide or the course textbook. So be sure to definitely read them because they're the foundations of your course. Online chapter flashcards. So once you write a chapter in the study guide, move on to the online chapter flashcards for that particular chapter. The flashcards, they're designed to quickly teach you many of the key concepts you could very well find in your exam. I kind of like to think of them as just like having a you know, a personal trainer by your side asking you questions and giving you detailed answers. Generally, you're going to find roughly 25, you know, flashcards or so per chapter. They're a really great source of material and a really great reference for you to use. Chapter quiz questions. So once you work through the study guide, the e-learning videos, and the chapter flashcards, move on and put your knowledge to practice with the online chapter quiz questions. Now, I want to be clear about one thing. The chapter quiz questions should be done individually in closed book. Individually in closed book, right? So the question in the quiz is, you're going to find them to be representative of, of potential concepts that you could be tested on your actual exam in terms of difficulty and focus. Now, the chapter quizzes really have got two purposes. First off, they truly are learning study tools. This means that it's very important for you to complete the quiz that's scheduled for each day, even if you don't quite feel ready, right? The, the key will be to study that, that answer explanation that appears after every single question and to review the material that you, know, you need to. So a lot of learning is gonna take place in these answer explanations, not just from doing the questions themselves and, and trying to guess at what the right answer is. Now, I wanna be clear about one thing. Generally, your first attempt score is a pretty good indication of your learning. So we strongly suggest that if your first attempt score is anything less than 70%, then you should treat that as a, as a, as a red flag or, or as, a, as a hand wave in the air saying, hey, you know what? There's a whole bunch of things I got right but there's also a whole bunch of things I didn't quite understand and, and look to reread or restudy that particular chapter in your book. It's certainly going to help you. And then do that chapter quiz question again. Do that entire series again to the point that you're very comfortable with all those questions in that chapter. Maybe that's a score of 90%, maybe higher. Who knows? That's up to you. All right. The point is, though, is don't try to memorize the chapter quiz questions. That's not going to serve you well for exam day. The questions you get on your exam are going to be different. But you definitely want to understand the concepts that all these different questions are based on. And if you understand the concepts and you understand them well, then it doesn't matter what you're being asked in your exam because you're likely going to be able to narrow it down and get the right answer and have yourself a great day anyways. All right, practice exam. So the randomized practice exam that you see up here on the study schedule in the final days before the real exam is a dynamic exam. And what it's going to do, it's going to take exam level questions from the different chapter quizzes that you've already done, shuffle them up, randomize them, and give them back to you in a weighting very similar to what you could see on your actual exam. So each time that you write it, it's almost going to be like having a different exam experience. You might have a little bit of overlap in some questions, you know, between each exam that you write, but overall, behind each exam, you got a couple of hundred questions that an exam could draw on, and it's going to draw on those questions in a random order. So write that randomized practice exam two, three times. Make sure you're getting, you know, a good score on that exam, and then by all means at that point, go write your actual exam. Final thing I want to talk about right here is the training support, right? And this really is a secret sauce, especially for this complimentary program. In the Mutual Fund Six Week Boot Camp, as you can see here, up here on the right side, um, we've got dedicated training support for you. 
So each week during the course of your studies, like I said before, you're gonna have the ability to attend live weekly webinars hosted by our trainers. You're gonna have the ability to book a one-on-one -on -one session with our trainers and ask them almost anything. And again, this is for students with a, an active CY subscription. Candidly, these sessions are better than gold and they can well make the difference between a 58 and a 60. Now, as you guys know, or maybe you don't know, on all of these regulatory licensing exams, the passing score is a 60, or what we like to call a 6-0 and go. <laughs> all right, let's move on from here. Three key points. So there are three key points regarding your course that I definitely want all of you to know and take away today. The first key point is this. The investment funds course from uh, Canadian Securities Institute or the Canadian Investment Funds course from IFSI Institute, these are not math courses. Okay, these are not math courses. Yes, you're going to get 100 questions, but of those 100 questions, on average, only five or six will probably be math questions. Now, that's your average, five or six. Some of you might have seven, maybe eight. Some of you might have three or four math questions, and that's all on average five or six. So if you're sweating the math, you're sweating some of the formulas, don't worry so much about them. Focus on the concepts, focus on your learning, but understand that even if you lose a few math marks, as long as you understand the concepts, you're likely gonna be absolutely fine. My second point is this. We do not cover everything in each of the CY Learning Study Tools. That's the whole point of a textbook, I mean right? It's designed to cover everything. So the CY Learning Study Tools, our study guide, our e-learning videos, our flashcards, our challenging chapter quiz questions, these are all designed to work together. I, I kind of like to think of them as much like the, you know, the four legs on a, on a chair or on a stool, right? As a student, if you're sitting on that chair or stool and you've got all four legs underneath you to support you, you're absolutely fine. But if you choose not to use one of those legs or more, then, you know, much like that chair or stool, you can quickly fall to the ground, right? So the third point I want to make is this. We teach in plain English, okay? When somebody comes to CY Learning as a student, especially for our introductory courses, we don't know what your background is. We've got no idea. I mean, I don't know if you're the kind of person that that majored in investment finance, you got a degree in, in commerce or business administration, I've got no idea. Or, or I don't know if you're the kind of person that majored in arts and you've got a degree in, in you know, art history or, or, or geography or something else. You know, those are two very different kind of majors, obviously, right? So what we do is we teach in plain English. I always like to joke around that if we can take a four syllable word and make it one syllable, we will, because it's gonna help you to be able to understand and to dive deep into the material faster. Now, on your actual exam, they're gonna do kind of the opposite. On your actual exam, I actually like to joke around. What they do is if they can take a, four, a one syllable word and make it four syllables, they probably will. So your exam is going to be more of an academic style of English language. Slightly bigger words, slightly longer words, but I want to be clear. The concepts that they're testing you are on is the same. The concepts are the same. So learn the concepts now and then later on when you get to your exam and you've got a little bit bigger words, no problem. You're going to be able to apply your knowledge and you're going to be solve those questions and you're going to be successful. All right, building blocks. So a lot of people ask me, what is a mutual fund? And that's a really great question. If you pick any two mutual funds and put them side by side and look inside of them, you're probably gonna see that, well, they're different, right? I mean, they might have some investments that overlap, but perhaps they've got different amounts of that particular stock, or perhaps those stocks that do overlap, they're bought at different costs, or maybe, They've got very, very little in common other than perhaps some cash sitting on the sidelines uninvested. And mutual funds typically often do have that. So what is a mutual fund? 
Well, let's start off by answering that with the following questions. My first question is, is what is a stock? Now, another name for a stock is a share. And each share simply represents a piece of ownership of a company. I'm going to show you something. I've got a pencil here in front of me. If I took this pencil and broke it up evenly into 10 different even pieces and took each of those pieces and gave it to 10 different people, guess what? They've all now got a share of this pencil. And if I took all those 10 shares back again and put them back together, I'd have a pencil. So that's all stock represents. It simply represents a piece of ownership of a company. Now there's more to it than that. There's different types of stocks and some pay dividends and things like that. We're going to talk about those further and you're going to learn about those later on in the course. But for now, I just want you to understand that stock represents simply a piece of ownership of a company. What is a bond? Well, a bond is simply a loan with two promises. Promise number one is the return of your money, which we call the principal or the capital amount. And promise number two is that for giving that loan, you're going to receive some kind of compensation along the way. And we call that compensation interest. So basically, when you're buying a bond from a company, what you're really doing is you're loaning money to that company for them to use however they see fit. Now, what that company will likely do, though, is try to invest your money into projects that will make an even greater return than the interest that they need to pay you. But at some point in the future, they're going to need to pay you back the loan that you gave them. What are cash or cash equivalents? Now, this is either cash or money that's invested in something that is so close to being cash. It's not quite cash, but you can quickly turn it into cash real fast. So I'm going to exaggerate a little bit in order to make my point. Let's say I've got some money to invest and I could invest into one of two things. I could either invest my money into Girl Guy cookies or I could invest my money into a really big yacht. You know, one of those big boats that goes on the ocean. Now, if I later on had to sell these items really quickly, which one do you think I'd be able to get my money back from? On the one hand, if I had to sell that yacht, I probably wouldn't be able to sell it really quickly. And even if I could, I might have to sell it for a lot less than what I bought it for. On the other hand, let's say I instead had a whole bunch of Girl Guy cookies and I didn't eat them. And these things do tend to sell pretty fast. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stores out here in Ontario that, you know, I could just stand outside and I'm pretty sure I could sell some of these Girl Guy cookies pretty quickly, right? So the point is, is this. I could quickly convert my money back to cash if I needed to. So when I look at these two different types of investments, I would say that one of them, even though it's not cash, it's almost as good as being in cash. And that's why we call it a cash equivalent. What are derivatives? Well, derivatives, these are more complex investments. Most often, actually, they're contracts where they derive their value from some kind of underlying asset. I'm going to give you an example just to make this more clear. Let's say I enter into a contract to buy a house for $500,000 in one year's time. Now, I don't know what's going to happen to the housing market in one year's time. That's anybody's guess. If the house goes up in value to $700,000 and I can buy it for $500,000, then what happened? Well, I did really well and I saved myself $200,000. In fact, in one year's time, I could even sell that house for more than what I bought it for and I could simply pocket the difference. I'm just ignoring taxes and stuff like that right now. Okay, but there's risk too. I mean, what if the value of that house went down instead to $350,000? Then I'm out of pocket because I agreed to buy it for $500,000. And if it went down to $350,000, that means I lost $150,000. So using this very simple example, I'm sure that you can see that although derivatives can be very profitable, 
they also have a tremendous amount of risk to them as well. So now that you know all that, what's a mutual fund? Well, a mutual fund is simply a whole bunch of different combinations of stock, bonds, cash and cash equivalents, and sometimes derivatives put together in different ways. In fact, if you had a mutual fund that consisted of all bonds from companies in Canada, we'd probably call it a Canadian bond fund. If you had a mutual fund you know, consisting of only stocks from Canadian companies, we'd probably call it a Canadian equity fund. If you had a mutual fund consisting only of you know, stocks that are from you know, companies in Canada, but also companies in the United States and, and maybe companies from different areas around the world, we might call it a, a global equity fund. Who knows? But the point is, is that, you know, two different mutual funds held up and side by side, they can be very, very different. All right. But you now understand what the building blocks are. And as you dive deeper into this course and in future study sessions, we're actually going to talk about these building blocks in much greater depth. So let me give you an example of what you can expect in future webinars. Here's a great sample question. This is really going to test your knowledge. Let's have a look at it together. Okay, so XYZ Corporation issued a 5% semi-annual pay bond three years ago. Since then, market interest rates have increased. All else being equal, which of the following is correct? A, the bond price would be above par. B, the bond price would be equal to par. C, the bond price would be below par, or D, the bond's coupon would increase. Well, you know what? This is a really good sample exam question because it really tests your knowledge of a few things. I, I can see it tests your knowledge about what bonds are and how they work. I can see also it's going to test your knowledge of how changes in market interest rates can affect bond prices. I can also see it's going to test your knowledge about What's this thing called par, right? And it's also going to test your knowledge about what happens to bond coupons. So there's a lot of things that this question is testing you on. You've got to know a lot of things to successfully get the right answer. Let me narrow it down a little bit. Let me see here. I, I know a few things. First off, I know that when bonds are issued, the coupon rate doesn't change. I think D, I can eliminate that one. I also know that when market interest rates increase, bond prices move in opposite. You know, there's an inverse relationship between market interest rates and bond prices. So I, I know that if market interest rates go up, the bond prices likely come down. So I'm going to say that would the bond price be above par? I'm going to say no. Would it be equal to par? I'm going to say no. Would it be below par? I'm going to say that's a potential yes. I've already eliminated D. So what? You know what? I, I think the answer is going to be C. Let's find out. Yes, it is. The answer is C. The bond price would be below par. But again, you know what? Um, this is a really good example of a question that we could going to cover you know, in future webinars. And, and the whole goal is in future webinars, we're going to have a number of different questions, probably just a handful to cover in each of them. So definitely attend those future webinars. The worst that can happen, I promise you this, is you're going to learn something new. All right, so what have we covered today so far? Let me switch over to my pen tool. All right, so we've covered off, we've introduced CY Learning, we've talked about the Mutual Fund Six Week Boot Camp, and we've introduced the trainers. We've talked about the structure of the webinars and that each will be an average of 30 to 45 minutes, but that you should definitely put some time studying into each evening. We've talked about the CY Learning Study process and how to use it, right? Read a chapter and after you've read that chapter, do the videos for that chapter. And after you've done the reading in the videos, then definitely do the flash for that chapter. And after you've taken those first three steps, then definitely put your knowledge to practice with the chapter quiz questions. So of those four things, each one of those is designed to work together, but do all four things each chapter before you move on to the next chapter. That's the study process. We've talked about the three key points that the mutual funds courses, these are not math exams. 
that we do not cover everything in the textbook because we don't need to. We're going to help you by simplifying and condensing what you need to know. But we also talked about the fact that we like to teach in plain English to help you dive into material faster. And finally, we discussed from a really high level what stocks and bonds, cash and cash equivalents, and what derivatives are as well. So what do we do next? Well, next we can get studying. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so I want to thank all of you for attending today's kickoff for the Mutual Funds Boot Camp. I hope that all of you got a lot out of it and enjoyed the session. I know that today was a lot of talking by me. Hopefully we'll be able to reduce the amount of me talking and increase the amount of you talking in the future. So in upcoming webinars, I look forward to that. They should definitely be more interactive. In the meantime, please enjoy your family time. If you do have some, enjoy your studies and please keep safe out there. I look forward to seeing all of you again on next week's live webinar. Take care and have yourselves a great day.